Michael, thank you for that uh, introduction. Um, we are very happy to be here. We want to thank the ADI team for hosting us on this webinar um, and also thank all the attendees that were able to join us today. Um, as Michael said, uh, please put questions into the chat box or the Q&A box. Um, we're here for the next uh, roughly 40 to 60 minutes to talk to you about a few things. Um, but as everybody knows, COVID-19 um, has created really unprecedented, distribu unprecedented disruption for people, businesses, and buildings worldwide. Many people are asking, is it safe to let people back in the building? Additionally, organizations are looking for innovative ways to protect, expand, and harden the health and security of their facilities. We're responding to customers' concerns with our Honeywell Healthy Buildings offering um, to help customers bring people back into safe and secure buildings. So over the next 45 to 60 minutes, we will present ideas for your customers as we return to work as restrictions are added. We suggested Honeywell products and solutions incorporate security as part of a healthy building campaign. Um, joining me on the call today are, um, as Michael said, several experts from the Honeywell commercial security side of things, and I'll ask them to introduce themselves as their names pop up here on the screen. Hey, Derek, thanks. Uh, Ed Evans, I am the uh, a leader of the channel development team here at Honeywell, which is a team that was newly created right around the start of uh, quarantine. So uh, 10, 12 weeks ago now, this team was stood up of industry veterans uh, uh, within Honeywell. This team uh, combined has probably a industry knowledge of about close to 100 years uh, between the five of us. But so what is the core focus of this team? This team is dedicated to uh, our distribution partners like ADI and the dealers that purchase through ADI. So as we go through the webinar today and you see products and solutions that maybe you're not familiar with or you want to know more about or you want to train your sales teams or you want to set up technical trainings uh, for your, your installers or your programmers, engage with this team. Uh, a few of these team members are going to be speaking today and uh, we are here to support you and drive success together. So uh, without further ado, I'll pass it over to the next person. Hey, good day, everyone. My name is Patrick Love. I am a member of this channel development team, uh, mainly covering the regions from the Midwest all the way out to the Pacific Northwest areas. So a very large territory. Uh, as Ed touched on before, our main focus is really supporting our strongest dealers, those that are part of our Honeywell Security Partner Program. So if that's something that's interesting to you, then please reach out to us. There's lots of value benefits that can come as being a member of that program lots of rebates and co-op dollars that can be spent to help you manage your company and promote yourselves. I've been in this industry as a whole for uh, 20 plus years now. Uh, started off working as a small mom and pop uh, alarm management company. You know, we uh, sold intrusion systems, did a little bit of net CCTV and telephony networking, those sort of functions. And then actually I worked uh, for almost 10 years at ADI doing counter sales. Um, I spent the last few years with the Honeywell side of things, uh, working in different roles as a trainer to a magical cloud specialist and now being part of this team that I'm very excited about. Today, I'm going to talk to you quite a bit about access control and how access control can help keep these buildings safety, safety, safety uh, with uh, an access on some of our uh, remote services that we can provide through those cloud services. So with that said, I think our next introduction slide. Hi, everyone. Maureen Bruin. Thank you so much for joining. I am a channel development manager uh, for the Metro New York up to Michigan and down to Tennessee. I am also the resident su uh, video subject matter expert here at Honeywell. Um, I've been with Honeywell over 18 plus years. I've been in the industry um, for over 25 and uh, have done um, many things um, from a selling perspective um, through the entry level all the way up and calling on the casino space. So I've pretty much touched it all um, and look forward to working with you guys in the future. Next up. Hey everybody, my name is David Walker. I'm the product manager for the uh, performance series video ad pro solutions and our 30 series compliant offering here at Honeywell. I'm really excited to jump on the call uh, with integrators uh, such as yourselves to be able to share these solutions we have from Honeywell. I think you'll be uh, very impressed with what we have to offer uh, and the fact that it's in line with a lot of um, what end users and, and building owners are looking for, especially in this, this COVID environment. So thank you and um, excited to be here. Thanks. 
And then as Michael mentioned, I'm Derek Nielsen, uh, distribution sales leader for North America, working closely with the ADI team um, on the merchandising and sales side to, uh, to put on presentations like this and to, uh, to make sure we've got the right product and solution set for you as you engage with their branches and engage uh, with your customers out there in the marketplace. As we look at um, security solutions in the new normal, uh, there's there's a lot of different points where security can play a role in a healthy building campaign or a healthy building environment. Starting uh, to look at the building and, and, and the very first point where people come into the building, reducing the number of touch points, making access as frictionless as possible, and also ensuring that the right people have the right access to the right parts of the building at the right time. Um, obviously, Thermals, cameras, um, it's booming. There's a lot of interest around that. We will certainly touch on that today. Um, we also wanna talk about the idea of people counting and flow monitoring. Um, we've got some great people counting uh, cameras and some solutions there that, we'd that we uh, look forward to talking to you with. Um, monitoring, uh, so lockdown monitoring, um, area monitoring, intrusion and loiter tracing, and then also making sure that the uh, total occupancy of the building might not be exceeded. Um, down the road, certainly tools and, and solutions around mask or PPE detection, as well as social distancing as, as those uh, guidelines are implemented based on whatever, wherever you might happen to be living in the country. Um, all of this can help building owners and building managers um, create KPIs around healthy buildings. Um, you know, one example could be total occupancy. Uh, many buildings may have an occupancy limit of 100 today, um, but in the new normal, it might be 50 or 25. Um, so being able to monitor that flow through access control, through people counting or, or, or um, monitoring is going to be vital to create those KPIs. And finally, communicating those KPIs up to management, um, trends, analytics, and performance so that they can ensure compliance and confidence as we move forward in 2020. So with that in mind, I'm gonna turn this over to Maureen and Dave, and we're gonna take a look at relevant video solutions uh, as we move forward with healthy buildings. Thanks, Derek. So um, we are going to break down our video solutions uh, for this COVID-19 environment into three basic categories, and we're gonna share them with you as we go through the presentation here. So the first will be people counting, and as Derek mentioned, this will help comply uh, with capacity requirements uh, for buildings based on square footages. Um, from what we understand, municipalities, uh, building owners, and city and states are sending out regulations as far as how many people could be in a building based on the uh, square feet and so forth. So this people counting solution, which we have uh, an SMB level solution that comes from the performance series and uh, Maureen will discuss our enterprise level solution. Um, so that, that's something we'll share with you. Uh, next is thermal cameras. Uh, so this, as Derek said, is a hot topic. We have an excellent solution with a high degree of accuracy that is 100% NDAA compliant. Uh, which is certainly a differentiator in the market today, uh, which we'll share with you some, um, uh, give you an overview and also some uh, details on what the product can do. Uh, and finally, we have our Ad Pro solution, which is a proactive approach to monitoring designed to minimize the amount of physical um, presence you have to have on site. Uh, so you can basically operate and monitor in a proactive method uh, without having a security guard on site. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to hand this over to our video expert, uh, Maureen Bruin. She's going to talk through uh, some of the people counting uh, features and benefits that we have here from Honeywell. Thanks, Dave. So we have um, our H2W2PC1M, uh, which you can see up in the top left-hand corner, um, can count the number of people that are in a store as well as the number of people that leave the store. And in the bottom right hand video, you can see a circle um, where it tells you the number of people that are entering and exiting. You can also um, define the number of people that are stranded inside the building. So for example, it'll take the difference between the number of people that have entered versus exited. So for, let's say you only wanna have six people in the store at one time, you wanna make sure that, that, that the stranded number is no more than six, um, it's good. If it hits that, uh, if it goes above six, um, it can either work as a standalone where it can do an email notification, but if it's working with our HEN recorders, our HEN line, um, you can have the ability with our HDCS software to either do email notification, it can alarm output um, either to a light or a siren, it can in addition do a voice prompt, so you could actually have 
um, a speaker set up where you can talk down to say, you know, the um, due to social distancing re uh, regulations that the maximum number of people have exceeded and uh, we need to, uh, you know, monitor and some people are going to have to leave. Um, as well as you can have a buzzer set up to either uh, alarm on the recorder itself, as well as in the software. Um, there are visual graphs where you can actually detect the data. So even going beyond COVID down the road, they want to see how many people are coming into their business and where their high times and low times are, you know, based on um, business. And then from a sales perspective, taking that and comparing it to the point of sale can be um, quite valuable. Next slide. So we do have a variety of cameras um, and solutions from a peak volcanic perspective. Um, the first top three are the edge solutions where the analytic is actually built onto the camera and it's included in the camera. And then um, for those of you that have been familiar with um, Honeywell for the past uh, number of years, we also um, offer a server-based solution. Um, I got to be honest, this H2W2 PCM1 that I mentioned and I'm calling the part number out, um, the reason why I'm doing that is it's, it's on promo with you guys for $119. And you coupling that either with the HEN3 or the HEN4 recorders, it's really, really a cost-effective solution to be able to monitor people in that entry-level space, you know, for all of those businesses that are small, you know, business owners where they want to open their doors and they can't today. It's really a cost-effective solution, whether they have an existing HEN going out there and installing one of these cameras, um, is quite cost effective. So um, as I mentioned, you can um, use that camera. We do have some of the existing equip series that will do um, the integration as well and that will either work with the HEN4 or our Max Pro and Ad Pro recorders. And then as I mentioned, you can either do it on a server base where it's standalone where you physically have a server or depending on um, specific Max Pro PE or SE units, you can actually have it installed um, on the box itself. So, um, you know, you can please reach out to the ADI systems pool as well as um, one of us um, for help for configuration if needed. Next slide, please. Dave, I'm gonna pass over to you to talk about thermal. Okay, all right. And um, one, one point on the people counting uh, camera, Maureen, you, you mentioned it does integrate with the hand recorders. So where aware that many of you have installed HEN recorders. Um, so it's an easy setup uh, to connect that to an existing infrastructure. And uh, with the HDCS, it's a 10 step process within the system and the software to deploy this. Uh, so again, um, quite a simple setup. You can reach out to uh, the systems team or your local Honeywell rep to, um, to talk about that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about thermal cameras. Um, this is the solution you see uh, here on the screen from Honeywell. Um, this camera is very accurate. That's one of the differentiating factors we have in regards to the degree of temperature. And it's basically a profiling system that is designed to identify uh, elevated temperatures within a group set. So it can measure up to eight to 10 people at a time, basically as many people that could enter the field, as view, view, field of view as possible. Uh, with social distancing, we, we anticipate about eight people would be in that field of view. Our accuracy is um, 0.3 degrees Celsius, which translate to about, translates to about 0.54 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which um, most of us are, are used to using here in uh, the U.S. So our camera comes with a black body, which is uh, something that some other players in the market have decided to sell separately. Uh, so when you do consider uh, the cost of the product, you have to consider that this comes with it. We only sell our cameras with the black body because of the level of accuracy that it enables uh, the camera to have. Um, the black body, to put simply, is a um, kind of a thermal noise remover. It sets a benchmark uh, for the camera to read temperatures and looks to remove any kind of um, thermal distraction, so to speak, from the scene so the camera can have a reference point when measuring uh, individuals' temperatures, okay? It does have a secondary HD camera that, that could be visible. We'll go through some different views that you can see uh, you know, from the screen. Um, one of the more important things about this particular uh, camera is it can be deployed as a standalone system or as part of a network deployed system. So 
what we mean by that is um, we are offering a solution where it comes with a trolley, and I'll go through the different uh, SKU selections, but it comes with an entire setup, right? A, a mount, a trolley or tripod, a carrying case, a laptop, a camera, a black body where someone could essentially put that in a vest, vest away or entryway uh, in the morning and move it to a different one throughout the day, uh, pack it up at night, move it to a, a different setup, and it could be 100% standalone. Or uh, you can incorporate this uh, through its integration to our Max Pro um, system as well. So depending on um, your application, it could be a standalone system for you to uh, you know, provide uh, building owners and so forth as a quick remedy to uh, the challenges they face in opening their buildings up after COVID-19 uh, or on a more permanent basis, it can be then integrated into the MaxPro system. The setup is really easy. Uh, the first time it'll probably take uh, the individual about an hour um, after they do it a few times and uh, conquer that learning curve, you can probably do it in about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, the camera is manufactured in the United Kingdom. Uh, it is 100% NDA compliant. There are no components from any banned manufacturers, so you can feel comfortable selling this system to end users where um, compliance is paramount um, and they don't have to be concerned with any uh, banned uh, manufacturers. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Derek, you can go ahead and flip to the next slide, please. All right, so a little bit regarding the, the capability. Um, the camera can measure 100 measurements uh, per minute. Um, with social distancing, um, we feel again that it'll probably be about eight to 10 people within uh, the screen. Really, it's designed to present alarm images along with an audible notification for live time monitoring. So imagine a security guard or um, security personnel kind of sitting uh, you know, in an entryway, and this will give an audible and uh, visual notification on the screen as far as if there is someone within the area of temperature. It's about a five meter distance. We have uh, a range that we'll share with you where it can sit. Um, this is an extremely reliable um, thermal facial detection system. So it ignores masks, it ignores glasses, it will ignore if you have a hot cup of coffee in your hand. It is really designed to measure the temperature on uh, someone's face. So it's important to, to understand that as well. Um, keep in mind that the temperature, the camera's job is to measure temperature. So if you have a situation where, um, you know, let's say you're uh, in New York in July and it's 100 degrees and hum humid outside and you walk into a building which is 75 degrees and uh, air conditioned, you know, that person's going to be a little warm from, from coming inside from the heat. So um, there is, so they will measure higher because that's what the, the camera's doing its job. It's measuring uh, the person's temperature. So if the um, difference in temperatures between the existing or sorry, to, from the old to the new uh, is great, then you may have a, a certain amount of time that you need to uh, stop and just let the person acclimate or you might get a, a false positive there. Okay. Um, See, I think we can go to the next slide. Hey, hey, um, uh, David, can I just interject a couple things real quick? Sure. Um, thanks. So two things. Number one, it will also integrate into Ad Pro recorders as well as Max Pro. Um, and with the um, with the one model, they can actually you'll be able to add in the future any vision. So you'll actually be able to have facial recognition in addition. Um, as an analytic on top of it. So it'll do facial recognition as well as be doing the, um, your traditional thermal detection. Um, it'll, it's gonna, it's measuring off the forehead to the top third of your face. So that's why it's not, um, it's not ignore, or it's ignoring the face masks and glasses. Um, in addition to that, some of the other products out there on the market, you physically have to stop and be standing before it reads. With this, you can have continuous motion where you can have multiple people walking through an area at the same time. And as you can see on the screen, there's actually five, it's detecting and reading five different people that are actually standing at various distances somewhat apart, um, which is really nice um, where we can, you know, get multiple people where um, the competition physically has to stop and stand in front of it individually to get a reading. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, Maureen. Um, so as far as deployment is concerned, we have, um, this is just a one shot of how 
Um, you could set up the black body uh, and, the, and the camera on the tripod. It's a versatile uh, form of deployment. We've had uh, conversations with many end users from um, an office building manager to, uh, to the military and, and the versatility in this setup is tremendous and that's, that's why it's a differentiator. Um, so again, you could probably set this up in about one hour. It can be used indoors and outdoors. Um, we've had this uh, being deployed in uh, certain instances where they're using it as checkpoints um, when cars enter a certain area. Um, so uh, that can be deployed outside as long as it's covered, as long as the black body is covered by um, some sort of overhang or something. So there's a lot of opportunities, um, COVID impacted areas. Um, think about even, they're talking about opening beaches here in New York this weekend. Um, how do they test to make sure people don't have elevated temperature? That no one's going to queue up outside uh, Jones Beach and sit in the sun and, and they're all going to be hot. But if it was entering through the car uh, at the guard booth, it would be an excellent way to make sure that everyone within that particular beach is, um, you know, not doesn't have an elevated temperature. So it comes with a pre-configured kit and carrying case. So someone could pack this up, um, bring it, you know, to a different spot at the end of the day or, or relocate it. We do have a camera only option, which basically comes with uh, the camera and the black body. If you're not interested in uh, the mount, the tripod or the, um, uh, you know, trolley set up there and we can go through that as well. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Derek. Okay, so here you see um, some of the benefits and features on, on the right hand side. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, what I'd like to uh, bring your attention to is the fact that we have two different versions of this, one with a 7.8 millimeter lens and one with a 15 millimeter lens. Uh, again, the accuracy, uh, 0.3 degree uh, Celsius, which translates to about 0.54 degree, degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which um, for a camera that does not have um, FDA approval is extremely accurate. Um, we are seeking FDA approval on, on this device. Uh, we do not have it yet, but we are in the process of, of seeking it. Um, another point on this slide I'd like to bring to your attention is the fusion of the images. Uh, so that's uh, the second to last uh, row on the left-hand chart uh, where you can see a thermal only image, a visible only, or kind of a thermal with, with uh, picture in picture. Um, and um, Derek, if you go to the next slide, I believe we have uh, some examples of that. Yeah, so here's uh, the, the kind of regular image on the right, and then you have your uh, thermal image on the left there. And as you can see, it's taking the temperature um, of those five individuals. Uh, we don't have a video set up here to, to share with you, but um, we have several demonstration videos where, um, you know, people walk in, put hot coffee, you know, in, in, you know 110 degree coffee boiling, uh, you know, in a cup right next to their head, and it's still reading the correct temperature. It is not our analytics allow it to not be interfered with by uh, anything other than, as Maureen said, the, the top of your forehead there. Um, so again, takeaways, uh, you know, for this, uh, you can go to the next slide, uh, Derek. Yeah, so takeaways from this is we have um, an NDAA compliant, competitively priced camera from Honeywell that can be deployed in a standalone system that does not need to integrate or connect to any other uh, type of uh, video system on premises, or uh, it can be integrated into a Max Pro system. So it gives you some, some flexibility there. The way we've decided to offer it um, is with some separate kits and by themselves. So the two first two part numbers you see there are just the camera and the black body in the 7.8 or 15 millimeter variety. And then we have um, a 7.8 millimeter kit with a tripod and one with a trolley. And then we have, again, a tripod and a trolley with no laptop. You would not require a laptop if you are integrating it into an existing Max Pro system. If you are not integrating into an existing system and using it as a standalone solution, you would order the kit with the laptop. And any of your Honeywell sales reps can help, help you, um, you know, make that decision based on the, the application there. And then we have... Um, the same situation with the 15 millimeter lens version, again, tripod and trolley, and then the same thing, tripod, trolley, uh, no laptop. The availability is going to be uh, mid-June. We should have these in our warehouse uh, very shortly and we'll be uh, able to ship out to you. Um, these are set up in the ADI system. I believe they're 
uh, just waiting on one or two uh, final bits, but essentially by the end of the week, you'll be able to go on here and get data sheets, go on ADI's website or uh, go to the Honeywell website, get data sheets and all the information you need to uh, you know, properly sell this to, to end users. I think that's the last slide for thermal cameras. And um, this next solution, the proactive monitoring, uh, the AdPro solution, I'm gonna hand over to Maureen. Uh, this is something that's uh, extremely uh, relative in this uh, COVID-19 environment. And I'm excited for Maureen to present this to you. Thanks, David. Uh, Derek, if you can click, start clicking. So our AdPro recorders, is, is, as David mentioned, is a proactive monitoring solution. So you can add either edge or embedded detection where we have analytics of our intrusion trace and or loiter trace that can be incorporated either onto the actual box itself as well as being deployed on the edge, at the camera's edge. We have dual homing for monitoring. So when you're partnering it with the third party central station, a lot of central stations out there have multiple locations. So if God forbid one location has goes down, it'll auto automatically dual home and, and revert to the other uh, central station. From a privacy and uh, cybersecurity perspective, we just launched our new uh, XO 4.5 platform that has uh, enhanced cybersecurity and privacy protection um, compared to the prior versions of the, uh, of the software. We have a mobile command and control, so you can um, integrate it into Max Pro VMS, our video central platinum, which is actually a, um, a software solution that you could, if you wanted to monitor it yourself, you could integrate and um, you could set that up and actually monitor your customer's locations um, from your facility. We do have some people do that um, utilize that rather than using a third party central station or um, we also have an iTrace mobile app where they can um, view it right from their handheld phone. License administration, there's a license exchange portal that will allow you to uh, manage all of your licenses for your unit as well as your software updates. It's scalable, so there's a wide range of solutions which we'll get to on another slide. Um, we have an I, um, a little gateway that will do up to four channels. And then with our IFT solutions, you can go anywhere up to 32 channels. Um, depending on the type of unit that you purchase, you can either get it with zero licenses and then just add whatever you need, or you can buy it in a kit where it comes with X amount, or then you can add to it quite easily. Um, from an external device support, it can control up to 168 inputs and 144 outputs between the actual unit device units as well as USB or networked IO devices, which is quite powerful. So you have the ability to do um, lighting controls, um, uh, door control, um, and third-party um, products as well. And then last but not least, you have your video, uh, visual verification, excuse me, where you're combining with two-way audio to help reduce false alarms. So central station, you have audio, you have the visual, you see somebody trespassing, it tr triggers an alarm. Um, that alarm is going to be transmitted in less than seven seconds. Central stations, you know, pulling it up on screen and talking down to the site, telling them, um, you know, that they're trespassing and that they need to leave. These solutions, you can go to the next slide, Derek, please. These solutions are perfect for um, utility spaces, um, unmanned construction sites. There's a lot of construction sites that are down now where they're not allowing people to get out there and, and, and to continue with the construction. And rather than having, whether it's, um, uh, uh, equipment um, or um, stuff that's being installed, copper, whatever it is out there that's being unprotected, you can utilize um, the IFT product um, to monitor that while no one is uh, on site, as well as for, build, uh, for businesses. They're not, somebody's not manning the site and they're not physically going to their office and they want to make sure that things are protected and secured. Um, it's a great way to use it. Augmenting guards. We have a lot of customers that instead of using guards, they're now using this for to man their sites after hours and um, saving that. We have three, as I mentioned, we have three different offerings. We have an IFT gateway, an IFT, and an IFTE. Um, the IFT gateway, um, we have a gate 
I-P-A-N-K, which includes the gateway and the four channel analytics pack that costs under $600. So it's a very, very cost effective. Um, these solutions can be used either standalone or you know, in recording them as they are, or you can also use them as a supplement to your an existing system out there or an existing recorder. Um, typically when you set these up, you're using the second stream on an IP camera. It doesn't have to be the highest resolution. Um, so it's a great way to add additional uh, security and uh, support on that system. Uh, with the IFT and the IFT, E, as I mentioned, you can have up to 32 channels, depending on what type of recorder. You can have a mix and match of either 32 IP channels on the um, unit, as well as analytics on the box with the IFTE, or with the IFT, you can do um, with 16 channels on the box, as well as 16 analytics channels on the edge um, at the camera. And they come both with up to 20 inputs and eight outputs. And then with the network IO devices, you can expand that up to 128 inputs and 128 outputs. So it's extremely cost effective. Next slide. Patrick, I think you're up, right? Yeah, thanks Maureen. So lots of great information provided there um, about our video offering and what's coming really quite soon. Um, I want to kind of expand on how we can protect our buildings here. We're talking specifically about access control. You know, we have our access control to be able to monitor and control access to like all parts or, or just certain areas of our properties. The ability to add things like cloud services, where we actually have the ability to remotely control those sites as well. And then, of course, I'll end talking a little bit about our software itself. So on-site software with powerful reporting tools, analytic tools that we can get involved with that. So it helps us provide uh, those KPIs or those key performance indicators for our sites. So first, I want to introduce to you, of course, our new MPA2 panel. This is referred to as our Max Pro Access two-door panel. It's our next generation of access control. So this panel here takes advantage of the new OSDP protocol. It's also the first uh, commercial access control panel offering that you can actually strictly use CAT6 wiring for. So great opportunities to come into these environments and have very low costs uh, for new deployments. Uh, can still continue to use that traditional access control cable that we utilize day in and day out. So there's a nice opportunity there for takeovers, but really focusing on the enhanced security benefits, taking advantage of that OSDP protocols and using things like a lower cost CAT6 cabling. When we're using access control in these environments, we can set up things like supervisor mode or escort mode for area restrictions. This is an opportunity where people can't go into an area unless they've had maybe a supervisor on site first, checking that people are wearing the proper uh, protection equipment that they're required to on site, maintaining social distances. So it's a real opportunity to provide checks and balances. Supervisor mode can be enabled on the readers and it's only disabled by one that's authorized to disable it by swiping multiple times on the uh, a key swipe, or escort mode rel uh, relies on two individuals to go into an area. So you can set up those checks and balances amongst each other or have kind of a general overhaul where a supervisor is verifying that those on site are not allowed to come in site until they've protected themselves properly. We can also run card activity reports in this environment as well in its standalone form. When we run a card activity reports, the reason why that's so important is because we can see who is on site. This will help us identify any possible exposure that could have occurred when someone may have tested positive. Now with these new panels, when we talk about a two-door panel, that actually means that we can add four readers onto that panel. We can add in readers as well as out readers. And while we might not be using an out reader because we have to provide free egress, for employees or, or customers to leave the site on their own, but we could use those out readers for a better means of on-site tracking. So we wanna know not only when someone came on site that might have tested positive, but we can go ahead and look through our logs and see who was gone on the facility during the time that someone else came on site. So lots of strength and power in this new MPA2 panel. Uh, you'll find that available at ADI today. We're really proud of this, uh, advancing the technologies with this panel, faster processing speeds, faster hardware that's involved with it. And of course, like I mentioned before, the ability to actually just run CAT6 cable out to our readers, out to our door locks, and enjoy that lower cost alternative. If you can go ahead and advance the slide there, Derek. These panels can work in a standalone function or they can tie into things like our cloud services. Now, cloud services like MaxPro Cloud can solve critical challenges that we have. 
Here's an example where we're talking about just out of hours delivery solutions. Hey, if we have a building and we're not currently manning at this time, we still might have to let people on site. People like um, uh, in, uh, delivery drivers, uh, people doing maintenance on the sites, those sort of functionalities. Well, when we enroll these devices in the cloud services, we can control that all remotely. This is actually a little snippet here from our new Healthy Buildings marketing material where we talk about how using a business-friendly app can help remotely take care of those sort of transactions. From this app with a fully integrated, integrated solution, we can do things like disarm the intrusion system, unlock a door, and visually watch them enter the premise, make their delivery drop, uh, perform whatever function they need to, and then go ahead and lock up the site after they remove. So the value that we can bring this is we're less exposure by doing this remotely. And there's lots of value that can bring into the dealer standpoint as well. Derek, if you can advance, please. When we bring in something like Max Pro Cloud, we can configure rules. These rules are ability to configure things like notifying when entry has actually occurred. So if we're on a lockdown site, we've told our employees to stay home, we can perform functions like create these rules and we'll be notified when someone actually came out on site. We can take this a step further. When we talk about tying this system into our HEN or HEN3 recorders, we can actually take the relay output that could trigger from when we've met that capacity, tie that into the input for our access control systems, and we can self-generate alarms and now send notification through the Maxwell Cloud app. We can also institute other triggers and procedures like locking down the door. So when we really hit that threshold, we can actually have that front door lock go ahead and engage and create what we refer to as a lockdown situation where nobody will be able to come in through the doors. The doors will be permanently locked until someone goes through that system and remotely unlocks the doors or ties in another rule where when, once we exit through that free egress, then that door will come back to its open state. Of course, we have the ability to run those reports as well in an easier fashion. We can access those reports remotely so nobody's being exposed on site, but we can run reports for a couple of different um, key metrics. We can run reports for the health of the system itself because maybe we're not there on site today. Maybe our stores are still closed. We can run health status reports. We can make sure, hey, everything's running as it's supposed to be. We didn't have any cameras go down. We didn't have uh, any hard drive crashes. Our remote access to our access control panels are still up and healthy and running. Or again, that card activity report on site as well. That's a key metric. We want to make sure we're aware of anybody coming out on site so that way if we had an exposure, we can make sure that we know who is present. Derek? Now, with this um, remote services, we do provide this powerful app as well. When we're dealing with the app, permission groups can be easily manipula manipulated offsite through remote access. So if we need to quarantine certain areas, or do we want to restrict the movement of customers, restrict the movement of some of our, uh, our employees, we can go ahead and say, you know what, the warehouse is still closed, but the front office is open for business. So we can change those permissions groups remotely. Um, doors can permanently be blocked. You can see right there, I've kind of highlighted on the app, there's this little SOS function. Okay, so using that SOS function, we saw a lot of use case of this before um, uh, this COVID, uh, you know, the, the COVID was hitting and we had to close down our sites. A lot of the sites was able to hit that SOS function, knowing that all the door locks are engaged. So if we applied an open schedule to them, they wouldn't trigger and all of our employees cards weren't working. Now we have exceptions. We have a few different card types like employee card, supervisor card for using with those supervisor modes, and then a VIP card. The VIP cards could still go through those blocked lockdown doors. However, our employee cards would not be able to gain access. So we saw a lot of use of that, controlling that remotely. And if we have to be prepared for something like this in the future, now that we're all self-aware about the responsibilities of this, then we know that going forward, if we have a relapse coming up in the future, it's very easy to lock down our sites. The main value too is that the, you as the dealer can continue to provide support remotely. There's no risk for your technicians. When we have access to all the data on site remotely and the programming and the configuration, it means I don't have to send a technician out on site. There's a lots of programming that can be done remotely so we can help those customers shut down their site securely. We can actually still continue to push firmware updates remotely through our cloud services, and we can continue to service and monitor the health and status of those without actually having to send a technician out on site and have them vulnerable to any exposures. So that's why we talk about how firmware updates and troubleshooting can be done remotely in that fashion. Now, sometimes cloud services aren't the key for us. Maybe we have to do something on site. So if you take a look at the next slide here, we can talk about how WinPack 4.8 can help. 
Now, WinPack 4.8 can really elevate some of that reporting experiences. For instance, we can run muster reports. So those are key reports where if we have an exposure, we can run it with just a few click of the buttons and see exactly who is out on site at that particular time. We can also see who read out and what time frames, so we can compare that card activity report for managing that on-site attendance even better in those environments. Now, other things that we could do, we could put card expiration dates in there for quarantine individuals. So if we know that someone needs to stay home for a 14 day period, we can go ahead and make their card deactivated and then it can become activated automatically after that time frame. We also have the opportunity for touchless reader integration with our WinPack 4.8. Okay, so for doing things like Bluetooth credential readers, those can come into this play very easily and we can manage those responsibilities. So I really want to tie in a little bit here about how access control can be a play for you just in a standalone format or really evolved when we bring in things like those uh, people counting cameras or those thermal detection cameras. When we trigger those alarms, we can tie that into the access control systems so that way we can flag doors, put them in a lockdown state, and then make sure that everything is being safe and securely handled. Now, with that said, I do want to turn it over a bit here. We have um, Andrea Powers on the line here as well. She's from your ADI Support Center, um, and she's going to come up with a, a few terminologies for you and talk to you just briefly here before we switch over to a Q&A session. Thanks, Patrick. Hi, everyone. As Patrick said, I'm Andrea Powers, and I manage our project registration group here at ADI. And uh, I just want to call and uh, I just wanted to get on the line and, and mention real quick about the group. Um, the project registration group has relationships with many vendors, including our Honeywell partners, um, to make sure that, you know, when you have your larger projects going on, that we work to make sure that we're priced right and that you win that bid. Um, one of the unique things about ADI is that we make sure that any of our discounting that we would receive, we pass 100% of that savings on to you. Um, so just want to make sure that you know that if you get into any big projects, give us a call, stop into your local branch, and um, let's get the process started. Um, and uh, I guess that's all I have then. Thanks so much. Thank you as well, Andrea and Michael. Um, it looks like there's a few things here in the chat. Uh, Michael, I think it's time for Q&A uh, for the last portion of this, and I think I can probably bring that up, and, and it looks like some of them have been potentially answered here. Let's start off with the chat and see what we got here. Yeah, it looks like uh, for the most part, I think some of these have been answered um, throughout the presentation. David, um, thank you for that and, and jumping in there. Um, Joe, uh, there are a couple of us on video and a couple of us that are not. Um, absolutely, the next time we will be sure to be all on video. Okay, uh, Abdil Ramon wants to know, what is the distance that the thermal cameras can capture temperatures. Oh, David answered that, sorry. Yep, no, 3.2 to 16.4 feet on that one. Okay. No problem. Um, and I don't see anything in the Q&A. If you all have questions, we'll hang up for another couple of minutes to see if there's more things that interest you. Do put them into the Q&A box. Uh, Joe Camerata, you're welcome as always. And let's see if any more questions come in. Uh, while we're doing this, uh, Derek, will you put up the map so people know how to get a hold of? Uh, you'll grab the share the screen again, and people will know how to get a hold of their most local Honeywell representative. Yeah, absolutely. I will share that right now. And uh, Michael, for all of the attendees. Um, we will make sure we send out a recap, um, a list of the products and solutions we discussed, as well as um, our most current uh, region sales map. And then we'll include the map for Ed's team as well. Thank you. That'll be great. Um, okay, another question came in or a question came in. Uh, approximate price for the thermal cameras. We don't really like to uh, give prices on these webinars, Ed, but I would say uh, any of you Honeywell folks can answer in MSRP language. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we are posting MSRPs, which essentially is the uh, difference between what you buy it at and the margin you can charge, charge uh, your end user. Um, I don't have 
I'm not going to read off the MSRPs for the camera. I don't think we have a slide for that. It wouldn't, if I just read it off here, it would just sound like Chinese for most of you. Um, but I can say that when you consider um, the fact that these cameras have a, a high degree of accuracy, which is going to be important because we anticipate uh, some frustrated folks who are stopped and asked to uh, take their temperature, imagine going to work and, and being stopped uh, because of a faulty reading on a camera. So that's important for traffic flow, for uh, the experience. Uh, so the degree of accuracy, um, the um, fact that the camera is NDA compliant and does not have any banned components <clears throat> when you compare the prices to some of the competitors is extremely competitive, <clears throat> excuse me. And I think you'll see that when you see your pricing uh, from ADI. But if you do have any questions, uh, once you see the ADI pricing loaded on, on their system, you can certainly reach out to your Honeywell sales rep and they can walk you through um, you know, the value propositions for the camera.